Hey guys, Mike here. So in this video, I'm going to show you how we pour a 60 yard concrete slab in 90 minutes. So we averaged about a yard every 90 seconds getting laid on the ground, screeded, bolt floated in this concrete slab. Now basically what we got is we got a four man crew here. We got a, actually a five man crew, but one guy's pretty much just making sure the board stays straight. He's not really helping out with the pour too much. But we got a 60 by 40 slab here. It's eight inches thick. And we got 60 yards of concrete. We're using a 4,000 PSI mix. We got water reducer in it. And we also, it's also got warm water in it. And we're using a little bit of accelerator today because it's a little chilly out. So when I set out to make this video, I didn't, I didn't really make the video intending to time us. But we ended up pouring it in pretty decent time. So I just wanted to show you guys how you know, like a four-man crew tackles a little bit larger concrete slab and gets it gets it poured in, you know, a pretty decent amount of time. It's, you know, we're definitely not the fastest crew, but we're not the slowest either. We're, we're a pretty good average uh, pouring crew that just is consistent and gets, it, gets the slab nice and level. Let me know down in the comments if you think we're fast, slow, or just kind of medium down there. I'd like to know what you guys think about how we pour. So I, I did end up speeding up the video just a little bit because I didn't want you to sit through, you know, 90 minutes of a video watching us pour this slab. But I wanted you to see how we approach a little bit larger slab versus like a smaller garage slab. Uh, what we do is we, we generally tackle it in sections and then we'll we'll get each section done then we'll move over to the next section with the next truck and, and we just keep moving our way from one end to the other that way so we got me there I'm running the chute pulling the wire we got a double row rebar around the edge Luke's breaking down the concrete uh, Darren's over there in the black sweatshirt with Harvey Harvey's helping us out he's in the orange today they're kinda of trying to get that board straight over there and then Jim, he's the guy, he's the other guy in the gray sweatshirt running around. He's the one we're actually working for today. He got this all set up for us and got it ready to go. So we're working for Jim today. But there's the first truck. So there's 10 yards dumped out. And now we're going to, I'm going to make my wet pad so we can use that to screed from. The outside forms are set right to grade. And this is just a flat slab. There's no slope to this at all. So we're going to be using the screed demon power screed today from MBW that's got a 12 foot board on it it comes with you can get just about any size board you want on that up to I think 16 feet or so from 6 feet to 16 feet but we really like the 12 we always strike our pads with a with a 2x4 magnesium screed first we just like striking our pads that way that way we ensure everything's perfectly level and then we'll come down it with the screed demon so what's good about having an extra hand here today is, you know, a few of us can be over there screeding and then another guy can actually start dumping out the next truck. So that's what helps speed up the pour a little bit here. And another thing that helps is when the drivers know the slump you want and they get things all mixed up in advance, get their chutes on so you don't have to wait for that. Yeah, you can see I'm getting that screeded over there using the screed demon and then Harvey and Jim are kind of, and now Darren are kind of pouring out the second truck. So that's what helps speed things up. That's how you can dump out a 10 yard truck in, you know, in, in basically 10 or 15 minutes. Get him out of there, get the next one in, get it leveled, and then move on. This is basically how you pour even a larger slab. You know, this one's 2,400 square feet, but whether you're doing 5,000 or 10,000 like this, you just, you pour it in sections about a truck at a time like this trying to maintain a wet edge so you don't have what's called a cold joint. A cold joint is when one of the loads starts setting up and it's getting pretty firm when you're pouring the loose stuff next to it and you know you don't really want that so you just try to speed things along as best as you can and not have a cold joint. So the next truck, this is the second truck here, the third truck will dump out over there to the left way up against that other old farm building and but then we'll also move him over here against this one so we'll maintain a wet edge with this third truck against both these trucks and that also helps with the finishing process too so it kind of helps make things nice and even when you finish the, the floor too you got to take that into account 
you can see I just got my wet pad made and now we're going to strike those edges as soon as we get the boards all magged off we'll get that second truck out of there and then move that third truck in and that's how we continue the process so you know we might be 20 minutes into the pour already we got two trucks out and gonna get them leveled right off That screed demon that works really well for screed and concrete you can see I'm just watching both my ends it kind of floats on the surface we, we're probably pouring around a six inch slump today with the water reducer in it and you know Luke and Harvey right there they're doing most of the work they're just making sure the concrete's pretty level behind me and then that screed demon will just level it right off and that makes it really easy to bull float also Who's tried a power screed like that before? Let me know down in the comments. If you haven't tried one, you know, let me know if you want to try one. Maybe there's a way we can figure something out where we can we can get a demo to you or something like that. But let me know down in the comments if you'd like to try one of those, if you've never tried one. Um, they're really pretty easy to run once you have someone show you the technique to get a flat floor. They're pretty easy to run. So we're moving on to the third truck now. So we're on truck number three is 30 yards. So we always have one guy breaking down behind the chute like that. And he's leveling it out by eye just as close as he can get it. You know, and these guys are pretty good. They, obviously, we do it every day. And then we'll usually have one guy magging the edges and one guy shooting a pad to make sure that we're not too high or too low. But for four guys, you know, pouring 60 yards in 90 minutes, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good pour. So you start at, you know, I think it was 6.45 a.m. when the truck showed up. So you're, you're done pouring by about 7.15 or 8.15. And uh, then you're just sitting for it, sitting there waiting for it, ready to, to power trial. You can see how we moved the truck over to get off both those that first load and the second load and maintain that wet edge on everything because like i said the concrete was pretty warm this morning they're using warm water here it was the water with temperature was about 115 degrees and with a 4000 psi and a little bit of accelerator in it it doesn't take long for the slump to change on this stuff so you want to get it poured out screeded and then uh, you know get that next truck right onto the edge before it starts setting up on you having being able to back the truck right into the slab too, taking one of the forms off really helps speed things up on this too if you you know if we don't do that then we either have to use a conveyor truck or a pump truck to do this so on a slab like this you can see where those concrete trucks have been backing in and out they, they're not sinking at all so the compaction on this is really really good this slab's never going to go anywhere so the wire mesh for reinforcement and then the double row rebar around the edge is just for you know insurance just an added reinforcement in here we're going to power trial this nice and smooth we're going to saw contraction joints in it so this this slab's never going to go anywhere eventually what this guy's going to do is he's going to take that wall down that, that, to the barn and pour the rest of the slab in that barn which is 80 by 60. You can see you can basically screed and puddle with with two guys you know if you got a really good puddler. It's a, li a little easier with two guys puddling but one guy can do it okay. I got my Marshall Town bull float there with my pro tilt head on that bull float. That, that was from Superior, which is the company that sells the mag vibe. If you guys ever want to check them out, that pro tilt head on that bull float makes bull floating really, really easy.
The other tools we're using, those come-alongs or concrete rakes, those are from Marshalltown. Our hand tools are all from Marshalltown, so we really like using the Marshalltown tools. Do you guys like Marshalltown? If you like Marshalltown, give me a thumbs up. Give me a like. Also, let me know down in the comments if you don't use Marshalltown, who do you use for concrete tools? So we got 30 yards on the ground now. So half this thing's done. We're waiting for that fourth truck to back in. I got Luke backing him in. Got his chutes on, getting him mixed up. You know, if those guys just sit out there and they don't get their chutes on and they don't get mixing before you end up dumping the other truck, that just really slows things down. So it's good to have some concrete drivers that kind of understand the process when you're doing bigger slabs like this. Especially when it only takes you a few minutes to empty a truck. You know, you want to make sure that they know what slump you want and that they can mix it up to that slump without having to add water three, four, five times to get it to where you want it. So we're kind of waiting for him now. You know, he didn't have the right slump at first, so he had to give it a drink, what we call give it a drink and get it up to slump. We like to be as consistent as possible with the slump. It just makes things better rather than have one load a lot looser than the next load. This company we're pouring with today, they have nine trucks total at their concrete plant. So we took six of them first thing in the morning. So it actually made it pretty good that we could dump them right out and get them right back to him since we took three quarters, basically two-thirds of his fleet this morning. It makes it hard because these guys have a lot of floor guys like myself all lined up every morning. And when one guy like, like me takes most of the trucks, then the other floor guys kind of have to wait until some of the trucks get back. And, you know, if you're a floor guy, you know you like pouring first thing in the morning every morning don't really like starting to pour around 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock in the morning especially when it gets dark now around 4 30 in the afternoon we like pouring first thing in the morning every day you can see i'm right there checking the grade making sure the guys are getting it close constantly pulling the wire up you know we couldn't put anything under the wire because we were backing the trucks in so we're constantly pulling the wire up making sure there's concrete under the wire you can see Jim there is pulling it up now even though we walk back on it the wire doesn't go all the way back down to the dirt it is always concrete that stays under the wire because of the aggregate in the concrete so and like I said the compaction on this thing was pretty much a hundred percent compaction so this thing isn't going to go anywhere. It's eight inches thick, too. He's going to be driving farm machinery on this. So this is truck number four. We're almost empty. Scraping the chute down with him. Truck number five is out there mixing up. You can kind of see him in the background. guys are always moving you know no one's standing and watching everybody knows that something always needs to be done when we're pouring concrete floors there's always something to do until you get done that's what makes it nice working with these guys everybody knows what they got to do and that really helps speed things up when when one guy like myself doesn't have to tell everybody what to do everybody just knows and can see in advance what needs to be done that makes things a lot easier now that's how we hand screed so if we could have hand screeded this thing and it would have been probably just about as fast 
but there's a lot more bending over and pulling with hand screeding. So we just wanted to show you the difference between hand screeding and then using a power screed like this. You can see the difference in the surface too when you use the vib vibrating screed, how it leaves it a lot more, uh, it brings a lot more paste up to the surface, which makes it a lot easier to bow float. So again, we're averaging about getting one yard down every 90 seconds. And that means poured out of the truck, screeded, and bow floated. So that's, that's pretty fast. I mean, we could be faster. If I told these guys we were gonna time ourselves and see just how fast we could be, we could probably get it down to, we could probably get it down to pouring 60 yards in 60 minutes. But that really wasn't, what I set out to do here but if you th if you're thinking of pouring a slab this big you know and you don't do it every day like we do this is the process you know you just got to get a truck dumped out you got to get it leveled screeded bull floated and then move on to the next one but you got to be you got to be somewhat efficient when you do it you can't just hold these trucks up for 30, 40, 50 minutes at a, at a piece. I mean, you got to get them dumped out and you got to get the concrete screeded. So if you are trying to attack a slab like this and you, and you don't do it very much, you know, you got to have a plan. You got to have plenty of people and hopefully you got somebody there that kind of knows what they're doing. We know, you know, just how this concrete acts based on using it every single day, using the same company every day. We know how much time we have before it sets up. And that helps a lot too, you know, just knowing the characteristics of the of the mix. And the differences between the 3500 mix, the 3000 mix, and the 4000. The 4000 is gonna set up quicker on you than the 3000 is. So if you're using a 4000 mix, you just wanna make sure that you got all your ducks in a row. You can see Jim's jumping in there and pulling that wire up, making sure that wire all gets pulled up really good. So this is going to be a big barn addition, but it, I mean, it could be a really nice garage slab too. I wouldn't mind having a garage slab this big, 60 by 40. What size garage do you have? I got a, I got a, I think I got a 40 by 28 three bay garage. I keep most of my tools and my trucks in, but that thing is full. This thing would at least allow us a lot more room around the edges. So truck number five we're on now. We'll get him dumped out. Then we got that one. Truck number six is already here. It's just out there waiting. That's another good thing about pouring first thing in the morning. You don't usually have to wait for trucks. You know, they'll just, they'll ship them right out if they know you're going to dump them right out. So there's no waiting and you can just get right back, get them right back to him. So again, we're getting truck number five here. We're pouring him all along the edge of that truck number four. So we don't get a cold joint over there. The stuff was setting up pretty good on us. I mean, you could tell, you could tell when we went back to Screed that the previous truck was already setting up a little bit. Not enough for what I would call a, a stiff cold joint, but it was stiffening up a little bit.
So he's empty. We'll get him truck number five out of here. Put the form back on where they were backing in and then get truck number six backed up. Do you, what, I mean, what do you think, if you pour concrete, what do you think you average per yard getting it dumped? Is it a yard a minute, a yard every two minutes, a yard every three minutes? Or have you never really timed yourself or checked? We're probably, for most pours, you know, I don't know, a yard every minute and a half or two minutes like this, I would say. We're, I think we're pretty fast for the size crew we have. You can see Harvey's getting that form. We're going to put that form back on, check the grade on it, make sure it's set right to grade. see how we strike those wet pads in the middle to go by that makes screeding really easy for us there's no pipes there's no two by four on stakes we got to worry about it's just we go by the wet pad and that's what we're used to doing and that's how we get our floors really flat You can tell, you know, if you do this a lot like we do when you're using a, a power screed like that, you can tell if you're, if you've got a little low spot or a high spot, it's pretty easy to tell by eye. I just run that thing at about half throttle and just lightly pull back on it. And then usually Luke and Darren, if they're puddling, they're doing most of the work really. For those of you guys, for those of you guys listening, you know, if you want to learn how to do concrete work like, like we do, I got a, I got a private training academy called the Concrete Underground, and I got a link for it down in the description. If you want to check that out, I got all kinds of different types of concrete training in there, from concrete slabs like this to stamp concrete to concrete repair, fixing cracks in concrete. Um, there's just umpteen different power trial and all, all kinds of different trainings in that private membership and you can check that out it's called the concrete underground and I keep adding to it I add a training each month so there's something new coming in there all the time all right so we're on to number six Harvey's finishing up the bull floating on number five checking the height of that form right now we're gonna make sure that's set perfectly to grade so we can finish this off Darren's over there he's gonna start dumping the concrete out of the truck taking a look at the slump I'm gonna say most times you know the when we tell the driver we want it let's say a six for a slump Rarely do they ever get it right the first time. Usually it's close, but we usually got to give it just a little bit more water to bring it to the slump we want, which is which is good. I'd rather have it a little too dry than have them get it too wet. Definitely can't take the water back out of it. Another thing on a on a slab like this, boy, you really want to make sure you order enough concrete. You don't want to run out. If we if we run out on a job like this, we're about an hour away from the concrete plant. You know, who knows? He he probably doesn't have any trucks sitting there waiting. We would probably have to wait for this truck to go back and get whatever the balance was, and then come back with it. So it would be at least two hours before we finished up so you always want to make sure you order enough concrete I'd rather send back a yard than worry about figuring it so close that you run out we pay about you know for the 4,000 mix here I'm paying about hundred and sixteen dollars a yard here in Maine right now and then they they do end up charging for hot water. They have a big boiler at the concrete plant. 
and they heat up. They got this big, huge water tank. I don't know how many hundreds of gallons are in the water tank. They use that boiler to heat that water. And then they'll charge so much per yard for that. It might be about five bucks a yard for hot, if you have hot water. And they'll run that hot water usually from November 15th here until like maybe the, the first of April of the following year. So we'll have hot water for quite a while. And then we'll also use accelerators, whether it's liquid calcium or non-calcium accelerators or even flake calcium bags, which we like the best. So you got to pay extra for that too. So it's pouring in the cold weather and in the winter is always a little more expensive than in the summer. You can see we're almost done that last truck there screen. I'm going to show you a little bit of us power trial on this too here towards the end. So make sure you stay and hang out for that. Luke and Darren stayed on this one to power trial it. You know, we power trialed this thing nice and smooth. And then they saw cut the contraction joints in just as soon as they got done power trialing with our, we use a soft cut saw. So we, we always saw the joints the same day. And that helps, really helps control any shrinkage cracks in the slab. I don't know if you notice on that concrete truck though, that's a big conveyor belt. That thing will reach 40 feet if you need it to. So if we if we couldn't have backed into this one, we could have used a conveyor like that. It's just it's just a lot slower pouring with something like that. It would have took at least another hour to pour this with a conveyor truck versus backing them in like we did. But this is this is basically how you pour 60 yards in 90 minutes. You know, a yard every 90 seconds. Four man crew with another man helping out a little bit pulling wire. This is how it's done. And, you know, if you pour one twice this size, it, it would have been the same type of process. So Harvey's going to finish up bull float. And Harvey works for himself, but he comes and helps out whenever we call him. So he's a, Harvey's a really good guy. He knows his stuff. He's been doing concrete work for a long time. So that's basically how you pour 60 yards in 90 minutes right there. Basic, simple steps. So well, this is a little bit later. This is a couple hours later. The concrete set up pretty good. And Darren's out here. He's getting on it with the, you know, we got a Whiteman here. And I got, I got an MBW power trial too we'll be using. So he's floating. What we call the first pass is floating it. We put some float blades on over the top of the finish blades and this is always the first pass is with the float blades like this and I teach you all about this in the concrete underground guys so all about power trialing if you want to if you want to learn how to power trial a floor like we do and get it really really nice I've got some trainings in there that'll teach you how to do that But two guys on 2,400 square feet. I mean, these two guys, they're really experienced, Darren and Luke. They, they can finish something like this easy. Really, I mean, one of them could. If I just left one guy and we went and did something else, one of these guys could have finished this too pretty easy. We got a big garage, like an 18-foot garage door right there. I don't know if you notice that edge is tipped down just a little bit there in the middle. Most all the slabs we do, whether it's a floor inside a foundation or a big slab like this, we always power trial everything. And then we'll usually always power trial it nice and smooth unless somebody tells us anything different. That's just a basic, basic day for us, a big pour. Power trialing it smooth. You can see Luke's trialing out that garage door opening right now. Then he'll re-edge that. And then when it sets up a little bit more, we usually take a really fine broom and we'll broom that tip down right there where the garage door is going to be. You can see he's got the broom now. So he's getting that garage door tip down all broomed and then when he's done, he'll run the edger 
up against the edge to round that edge off really nice. Luke's pretty fussy. He likes things coming out perfect. So this might be about an hour, maybe four, only 45 minutes after Darren started floating. Now they're both on here with the finished blades. And it's getting really, really smooth. Now you can see the sun kind of popped out. It's almost like finishing two different slabs. The part in the sun is drying quite a bit faster than that part in the shade. I'm going around and just kind of smoothing out their edges. But that's how you pour and finish a concrete slab that's 2,400 square feet, 60 yards. Get it all done in a day. But the pouring part, you know, being, being fast and accurate and level on the pouring part is, is a little bit of a learning process, you know, for those of you who don't do it a lot. Some of you guys I know in here, you do it a lot like me every day. So this is this is nothing for you guys. But a lot of you I know want to learn how to do this stuff. You even want to maybe start your own business. And I can help you with that in the Concrete Underground too. So, you know, check that link out below. But learning how to do this takes takes really takes someone helping you at first. You know, you don't want to jump right in and just start doing this without knowing what you're doing. That could cost you a lot of money, but if there's a way I can help you out, I'll help you out any way I can. So that's the basics, guys. I mean, thanks for watching. Make sure you come back. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed yet. Make sure you hit that like button. That'll help me out with that YouTube algorithm, Make my help my videos rank a little bit higher in YouTube. And we'll see you on the next one.